Welcome back to BNC Live. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand has been pushing for years to remove commanders from deciding the outcome of sexual assault cases in the military. According to the New York Times, as the senator's bill gains steam, it's again getting some pushback. Some lawmakers calling the measure too broad and say it wouldn't allow the military to investigate other crimes like murder. But the bill is also expected to help combat racial injustice, especially when it comes to investigating the assaults of members of color. In part two of my interview with military sexual assault victim Sandra Shank. She explains how Senator Gillibrand played a role in helping in her case. She was raped 35 years ago. When he said, I am going to break you, had it not been for the grace of God, I would not be here today. Because there were decisions that I made after that that were so out of character for me because my brain, my mind, the trauma of it just ripped away at the very fiber of my being. It was in my sister passing away that I ended up getting the intensive help that I really needed through the VA. I went into weekly, um, ind weekly individual sessions as well as weekly group sessions, intensive therapy for military sexual assault military sexual trauma. Mm. And I began to get my voice and some strength. And so one of the things that I ended up doing was traveling to Washington, D.C. and literally just walking the halls of Congress. No appointments, unannounced. And by the grace of God, I walked into Senator Gillibrand's office, was one of the ones that I went into, and one of her aides that handles military situations, she actually sat down and met with me for over an hour. And she herself was a military police. And she told me exactly what I needed. She actually um, drafted the email with the language that Senator Nelson's office needed to request my documents because I had been trying to get my file for quite some time. And so with the information that I had gotten from Senator Nelson's office started sending me the information as they received it, I started. And thank God I was still in therapy because it really was very triggering to read everything was very, it took me back. I missed so much. You're talking about this man took so much from me. And because of the way that the system was set up, he was able to continue a career that he did not deserve. He did not deserve it. And my career is taken away from me. This drill sergeant taught the class on, he taught the class on military law and justice. He taught the class on military law and justice. He said to us that day, you're a new recruit. You know, he's been serving longer. I'm a career soldier. He says, if I did something, who do you think they're going to believe? You or me? The report that I was pouring through was about 300 pages from the, the Independent Review Commission that decided to take a look at this that um, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin actually requested. So in that report, it talked about so many survivors um, who shared their experiences, but so many of them that said they regretted coming forward to begin with. And they also attempted suicide or thought about attempting suicide. When you look at these stories coming together collectively and saying, now somebody is finally trying to do something. How does that make you feel? Well, I, I have two emotions. I'm grateful that it is happening, but I'm also extremely disappointed, disappointed that it took this long. And because of all the victims, all of the victims that still that had to, to had to occur, more, so many more women and men that had to be victimized. So because the United States military is guilty of human sex trafficking, human trafficking, and this is what happens. And it's sad. It's like Vanessa never surely should have had to die. Mm -hmm. Why did she have to die? Why did so many others have to die? 
for this to get to the place that it is now after so many of us have been fighting for years before these people lost their lives. So I think that the whole accountability, I think that it goes all the way back. If they begin to look at, like and when you look at my CID investigation, everybody that's named in there, from my company commander, the first sergeant, all of them should be stripped because they protected him, including him. They all should be stripped of their military honors. They all, all should be stripped of their retirement. They all should be stripped. And that's not just them. That's for every man, every woman who has suffered and they have covered it up. Until they do something like that, there is no justice. Because there's too many women and men that have ended up, by the grace of God, I did not end up on drugs. I did not end up with a child as a result of it. But I do know, I know someone who did have a child and, and, and she was forced to sign multiple powers of attorneys, threatening her that if you don't let this go, you're gonna lose this child. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about in the United States military. The chaplain told me, he says, Private Hall, I know you don't understand it now, but God allowed it to happen and he's gonna receive the glory from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 35 years later, it's still coming. And if it's nothing more than my voice so that there would not be another private hall, another Vanessa, another, you know, all of the other people that I know would not have to go through it anymore. Another bridge, all these different people that, that I know. And right now, Senator Gillibrand has bipartisan support of about 70 senators for her bill. The legislation would also need congressional support. Well, still ahead, she.